Yes, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're watching from. Welcome back to the channel. Hope each and every single one of you are doing well out there. Before we get into today's video, David Ornstein has given us another update on Conor Gallagher. And we're going to be talking about Tottenham's financial reports that have been posted via Deloitte. But without further ado, if you're enjoying the content, go down, drop a thumbs up. The amount of likes we're hitting on every video now is absolutely unbelievable. I think like something like one in every six people are liking the video. So make sure you go down, like the video, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We are under 200 subscribers away from 20,000. Want to hit that before the 1st of February, which would be absolutely insane. But before we get into David Ornstein's update regarding Conor Gallagher, now Tottenham's financial reports of last season have been posted via Deloitte, and Tottenham rank the fifth richest club in the world in terms of revenue generated off of last season. Now, to put this into perspective, this is absolutely insane because every other football club other than one on this list last season was in Europe. Every other football club was in Europe. Real Madrid first generated 831 million euros last season, which is just unbelievable. Man City, obviously, second. They won the treble. PSG won the league in France and the, the, the French Cup. Barcelona won the league. Manchester United uh, won the League Cup and got in the top four and had a relatively good season under Ten Hag. Bayern Munich won the league and had a good season. Liverpool finished fifth, had a good season though, overall. And then Tottenham, who had one of the worst seasons we've had in a long, long time, finished eighth. And yet we generated more money than Arsenal, who finished second, more money than Chelsea, more money than West Ham, more money than Juventus. Inter Milan went to a Champions League final you know, and won a Coppa Italia, we finished higher than them. The amount of revenue streams this football club has is unbelievable. We've got money coming in from every single angle. And it's good that we're looking at putting that money back into where it needs to go, back onto the pitch. Right now, I think next season, I think this season, sorry, you know, genuinely, this season, we, so when the 2025 report comes out, we will probably be north of 750 million euros if we get that Champions League money. You know, it, it's absolutely insane the amount of money this football club is earning, considering we're the only one in that list that didn't finish any European place. Now, we're going we're gonna to move on. David Ornstein gave us a report last night, 9.30, Big up to Spurs Connect. I know lots of accounts that have put it out, but we are going to we are going to speak about their report. And it says Tottenham may be able to get a deal for Chelsea midfielder Conor Gallagher sorted by the end of the transfer window. And just really got Levy in a headlock. Antonio Nusa probably will be sorted out in the next two days, two or three days, to sign young, talented Norwegian winger. But David Ornstein has come out of a report to say that Tottenham may be able to get a deal for Chelsea midfielder Conor Gallagher sorted by the end of this transfer window. Interesting, isn't it? That means someone will be going because we're not going to... I know Romano's come out and said something along the lines of, Something along the lines of Chelsea want a package of around 50, 60 million pounds, something like that. But like gen genuinely right now, I don't, I don't, I, half of me saying it's not realistic and the other half of me saying, well, if he's coming out saying that, then so well, someone's got to leave. And if, if he, he were to come in, I believe it's Hoiberg will be the one that will leave. 
you know, that that's kind of where I'm at in terms of that. In terms of Conor Gallagher, Fabrizio Romano put out this yesterday at 11.08 p.m. And this is a quote that the Spurs Express have put out. The only way for Tottenham to sign an important midfielder this window is for them to sell a player, Pierre Emil Hoiberg. Interesting. But there is still no bid for Hoiberg. Chelsea want big money for Conor Gallagher, not 30 to 40 million. Now, it's interesting because Conor Gallagher would be 100% profit for Chelsea because he come out of the Chelsea Academy. In terms of Conor Gallagher, 23 years of age, valued at 42 million euros, according to Transfer Market Dakota UK. But in the summer, he'll only have one year left on his contract. He's managed by Elite Management Agency. That's who manage him. They've got 76 players on their in their agency list. A majority of them are London players. Obviously, we know Conor Gallagher very well. Can play central midfield, can play attacking midfield, can play defensive midfield. Homegrown, lots of experience in a Chelsea shirt. Been the Chelsea captain this season. But if if we're going to get this deal done, that means Hoiberg's got. That we, we Hoiberg will be the one to go. I j- I don't I don't think that. I don't think it will be Giovanni Lo Celso. I don't think it will be this person or that person. I generally think right now it will be probably, you know, David Ornstein said yesterday that the mid, there, we may be able to get a deal done. That means, obviously, like Romano said, one player is going to go. In terms of Pierre Emil Hoiberg, you know, he's 28 years of age, like that, looked at by the likes of Juventus, Bayern Munich had some small interest in him. The potential probability of a transfer to Juventus at the moment is below 30%. His contract expires June 30th, 2025. So he also will have one year left on his contract in the summer. I don't, I, for me, I just don't know if this is, if Hoiberg goes, then yeah, we could go and get, uh, we go and get Conor Gallagher. But if we've got to spend 50 to 60 million pounds, with someone who's got 18 months left on their contract, I'd rather wait until the summer and then go out and get him for 20 or 30 million. Like, I, I generally think right now that 50 to 60 million pounds for someone who's got 18 months left on their contract, plus, is he really going to want to go and miss out on playing on a final against Liverpool? This is another reason why I don't necessarily think that's realistic, him coming this month. Um like the, the EFL Cup final is going to be played on the 25th of February. You know, it's a repeat of the 2022 final, Chelsea versus Liverpool. Right now, the match is going to be played 4.30, 25th of February. There is no way, in my opinion, that Conor Gallagher will leave this window. However, the more and more rumours are coming out, I actually think right now that he probably will be a Spurs player in the summer. You know, there's a lot of links. There's a lot of links to him, you know. But if David Ornstein's coming out and saying right now that we could go in for him, he'd he'd have to be absolutely fuming, absolutely fuming at Chelsea to want to leave and not play that final. He would have to be so unhappy, it's unreal, which I don't necessarily think is the case. I think he'll play there. And I think right now that, you know, we'll probably get him done in terms of the summer. Got the FA Cup game, you know, in only a few days or tomorrow, actually. That's the biggest game of the season for me. That is the focus right now. Get through that game, then wrap up Antonio Nusa. But we've only got, you know, five or six days left of the transfer window. And as of right now, we there's big question marks about what's going to happen for the remainder of the window. When is Nusa going to come? But now everyone's thinking Conor Gallagher. I personally do not think he will leave Chelsea knowing the fact that they are in a cup final against Liverpool 
next month, the 25th of February, I personally cannot see him him leaving. It would be it'd be a massive, massive, massive shock for you know for him to leave. Now, Kieran Horn via the uh, Football London has put out saying Tottenham have already hinted at James Madison's availability for a return after City training. He only returned to training, you know, the last few days. So it would be it would be a massive step up for him. I think he probably will come off the bench in terms of that. Now, uh, Erling Haaland has apparently been ruled out due to an injury. So he probably won't be in the game, which is which is an, another bit of interesting news. Manchester United are heavily linked to Marcus Edwards. Now, we have actually got a sell-on clause in that contract. You know, Marcus Edwards has doing, been doing relatively well in Portugal. And Spurs stands a profit on a potential t- sale from Sporting, depending on you know the level of the level of the, the the transfer value. In terms of Marcus Edwards, we have actually been linked with him with actually getting him back. You know, homegrown player, winger, can play on the left, can play on the right. Twenty five years of age. Valued at 28 million euros. This is a play, a lot of people are interested in him. Can play on the left, can play on the right, can play on the number nine. Has a lot of the attributes that we I would definitely be looking in for a winger for if it was me. Doesn't have a horrendous, doesn't have a, a, a sorry, a too great of a record in Europe. You know, I know he scored in a couple of times against us. In terms of his record for Sporting, and Vittoria, he's played 93 games for Sporting and got 43 goal contributions, played 96 games for Vittoria and had 34 goal contributions, played out in Rotterdam and for Tottenham's under-21s, he had 17 goal contributions in 28 games. But that is a player that lots of people have been speaking about this window. I don't think it's realistic, personally, for me. I generally think that we're more likely to just... He's more likely to join someone else and then we potentially could profit from a sell-on clause that way. Let me know your thoughts down below on the Conor Gallagher saga. It's another twist, another turn. Now, Leroy Sane is another one. I've actually seen quite a few links linking Leroy Sane to Tottenham. Now, this for me would be absolutely <laughs> insane. You know, Liverpool, according to Sports Mole, Liverpool, Arsenal uh, and Tottenham all hold interest in Leroy Sane. Obviously, Bayern Munich at the moment, not having the best of seasons, four points off of top. Did win yesterday um, in Eric Dyer's debut. He's valued at 80 million euros and is having probably the best season of his career so far. 18 goal contributions in 18 games. He is absolutely flying. Can play on the right, can play on the left. However, right, however, this is this is something worth noting, right? In the summer, he only has one year left on his contract. So that there's no way they can be looking at 80 million euros with one year left on his contract. You know, he, he's won a lot of trophies. He's won three Bundesliga, he's won two Premier Leagues, He's won a Club World Cup. He's won an FA Cup. He's won Super Cups, League Cups, Charity Shields, German Super Cups. He has won a lot of trophies, you know. I I don't necessarily think Leroy Sane coming to Tottenham is realistic. His wages are extremely high as well, north of 250 grand. He'd have to take quite a significant pay cut if he were to join Tottenham. However, I generally think that, you know, we're being linked to a lot of forwards right now. Josh Zerkzy, Santiago Jimenez, Garazzi, and now we're being linked to Leroy Sane, another forward. Plus, we're being linked with Antonio Nusa. 
we've been linked with a lot of players right now. I, I, I like forward definitely is going to be the option we're going to turn in right now, but I don't think signing Leroy Sane is realistic. Like I said, his wages are going to be so so high; it is unbelievable. But we'll have to see uh, where we're at. We've got FA Cup preview coming out later today. Make sure you drop a like on the video. Make sure you have subscribed to the channel. I'll see you all soon, people. Thank you all for watching. I am.